Okay, today we're doing glazing in oils, which is lovely to do. It's a very traditional way of painting, uh, because in the old days, uh, colour was really expensive, and so they would paint more or less in the earth colours. You can often see in museums something called a grisé painting, so this is known as grisé. So you paint all your tones right, is the theory, and then you can just use thin layers of colour on top. So the colours that were really expensive, you're just using a tiny, tiny bit of that. And I think Annalise told me once that some of those old masters have 40 layers of glaze on them, which makes them look so gorgeous and sumptuous. So, uh, so I'm going to do a grisé painting uh, of my still life subject. I'm just going to move the camera so you can see the subject, which is over there. Yeah, here I am in my studio. Uh, we're doing glass and copper because uh, this is a lovely way of painting glass and copper. I don't know. Yeah. Get the camera back to where it was, more or less. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to do a, actually a black and white painting in acrylics, just because it's quick and I can just crack on and do it. You can paint oils over acrylics, but not acrylics over oils. Uh, this was actually a grisé painting I started with heritage tomatoes, so they're all sorts of funny colours, but I can't remember them now. And they've rotted away. <clears throat> And this is one I've just done in my oil painting class I'm running at Starling Studio. Um, and you can see how zingy those colours are. And it's a really, really good way of painting copper and gloss, as I said. Uh, <clears throat> so, first things first, I'm going to do a drawing, which ta -da, I've already done, of my subject. And I just want to show you a quick way of being able to transfer a drawing onto your painting surface. It's always good to do a good drawing first. Um, so you can actually fit everything in. This was too big, that was too short. So I mess around with it and I've used the similar technique that I did last time of uh, smudging with charcoal, trying to draw the light, trying to get away from lines. So I'm just going to show you how to transfer your drawing onto your painting surface. So here I'm just going to do a uh, make your own carbon paper thing. So this was my drawing. My drawing. And I'm just going to go on top with, car uh, with charcoal, just willow charcoal. You want willow charcoal, you don't want compressed, it's too dark. And willow charcoal's got this nice property of um, uh, just being quite erasable, not too heavy. So there we are, making our own carbon paper. This is quite an uh, e old fashioned way of doing it. My drawing. <coughs> stop. We've got the gas man. Uh, right, um, so I will say it's like doing maps and geography, but everybody kind of looks blankly at me. You don't want a mirror image, which you can sometimes get just by rubbing. You want the right way round. So here's my painting surface. It's just a piece of uh, prime canvas, and I'm just lining up my drawing so it fits on. Here, yeah, more or less. Um, and then... And you can actually adjust where you want things as well at this stage, which is quite good. That's probably going over there a bit. That'll probably be it. And, uh, yeah, done. That's it. So I now need a biro. And I'm just going to draw around my picture with a biro. Pressing quite hard. And I'm transferring the design. So this is the compositional design of my pet oops my drawing onto my painting surface and it just uh, this means the time you spent drawing your subject is not wasted so getting everything in the right place it's much better to do that at a drawing phase rather than at a uh, at the painting phase because you can make all your mistakes now you can adjust things you can push them around and look you will find it's much easier this way if you <clears throat> if you haven't figured out what you're painting oops that's entirely too big um, by the time you come to your drawing you're kind of sunk really and that sort of goes like that there, it goes down here and goes like that and we'll just go around like that eek it does sort of do that doesn't it <coughs> So hopefully it's 
it's been transferred. There we go. <clears throat> so I've got everything where I want it. The cats. Um, and so now <clears throat> I'm going to do the painting. So I'm just using black and white acrylics to create a grisé type painting. Um, so I'm just going to give that a little spray. Um, can you see it there? Maybe I'll put them there. And I'm just going to pick up and make a grey, I think, and establish my drawing again. Uh, so here, quite dark. And I will actually, I'm, what I'm going to do is just establish my drawing before it disappears before my eyes. And the reason why you don't want to go crazy with the charcoal on your actual painting surface is because um, you make your paint mucky, you've covered it with bits of carbon and the bits of carbon get in your paint and then you've got mucky paint so don't do that. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go in here and put in the tone so you have to imagine sort of painting a black and white photograph. I'm just gonna add a bit of water to my acrylics to make them flow better. In here um, so I'm going to go on and paint this um, and what I'm going to do is actually speed it up for you because otherwise you're sitting there watching paint dry and the thing you really want to know about is in fact the uh, how the oil glazes work so a bit of Benny Hill music <clears throat> and we'll be off
here we are we're going to now actually start adding oil glazes to my black and white acrylic painting i think a purist would probably do it uh this phase in oils but obviously they take time to dry and i want to do this in one day so you can paint oils over acrylics but not acrylics over oils so here we are so it's almost like a battle black and white photograph of my setup over there and what i'm going to do now is add colored glazes this is actually quite a quick process because it's pretty much like coloring in so I'll just go through my palette. So uh, over time you get familiar with which colours are transparent and which are opaque. Generally yellows are opaque. Uh, yellow ochre, uh, this is cadmium yellow hue. Uh, this is cadmium red, also opaque, white opaque. But all the rest of these colours are actually transparent, which makes life much easier. Um, so I have, this is actually Indian yellow. Well, I don't know if I'm going to use it, but it is a lovely colour. And that is a transparent yellow. And it's called that because it used to be made out of the urine of dehydrated cows in India. Um, so with oil paints, what's useful to have around, I don't tend to keep a uh, solvent around like the turpentine. Um, I just use a um, kitchen towel to wipe my brushes down. I will use it, I suppose, if desperate. But I'll just keep going through the colour. So, oh, cambium red, I'm probably I'm going to have to use. You can see how opaque that is. Add a bit of Liguin, and it's still okay. <clears throat> and then here I've got Elysian Crimson, which is naturally quite transparent, so that's ideal for doing glazes, and add a bit of the, uh, the painting medium, which I suppose I should talk about in a minute. Uh, so that's Elysian Crimson. This was Permanent Rose, which is a bit more zingy, but I don't think I'll need that. This is Burnt Sienna, also a very transparent colour, naturally, and you just add... A little bit of bleak when you can see that is very transparent. I've got a little bit of burnt umber here. This is known as sort of semi-transparent. Um, most paint charts and on most uh, tubes of paint, they will tell you how transparent it is. I'm just looking here. They generally have some sort of star system. Um, and it will tell you how transparent each, uh, each colour is. But you get to know them over time. And if you keep to a limited palette, you'll always know them. This is yellow ochre which is also very opaque. That's good for building up things. Oops, I added white to that, not liquid. <coughs> uh, and again, that it's a little bit transparent with some liquid. This is French Ultramarine, uh, which now I've got a bit of yellow in as we're going a bit green. But uh, again, that is naturally transparent. Another useful thing to have around when you're oil painting are baby wipes. You don't want to go crazy using them, but they are quite good for cleaning up yourself when you get covered in paint. If you can find baby oil wipes, they work, they work really well. Now, the one the substance I've been talking about is called Liguin. I should work for Windsor & Newton. This is an alkalid painting medium. It improves... Uh, speeds drying so they generally if you paint with liquid as your medium it will dry within 24 hours which is always useful and it's also very good at doing glazes there are all sorts of arcane archaic recipes about glazing mediums involving damar varnish and stand oil and goodness knows what else but this does pretty much all those things and the reason why I like this one particularly I have tried them all um, is that it lasts um, keeps the paint active for about uh, two to three of uh, three to four hours I think and then it starts drying off it's sort of a glue I think and this is one I recommend I've tried all the others the De La Roni and Sennelia and all that this is the best one and it's so versatile I always recommend it for all my students okay so now we do some glazing and I'm going to use Liguin I'm going to start with this blue jar with a clean brush and what I'm going to do is make up a glaze of French ultramarine. So I'm just going to take a bit of that. Ooh, look at that. Yum, yum, yum. And pretty much I can put it on like that. Maybe a little bit more paint. As I say, it's quite a naturally transparent colour. But you can see, if you get the tones right in your grisé painting, in the black and white painting, you can pretty much just colour it in. I might need to put my... Um, little lights on again but it's no bad thing to have them there in the first place uh, so pretty much I can paint over this I want a little bit more color 
And these are the brushes I prefer. These are long, flat uh, sterling, if you can see, long, flat uh, square sterling brushes. Uh, they're not the cheapest in the world, but I do like them because they give a nice structural stroke and they're quite smooth. I find uh, the traditional brush, the hog hair brushes, I find get a bit bristly, which I don't like. And you can see your brush strokes. So, as you can see, I'm just building up this glaze and I'm pretty much putting it on like this. I will refer to my subject again in a minute. Um, and then I can work into it to add the details I want. But it might look okay pretty much just glazed and here we go um, I much prefer oils to acrylics because they're so much more I think sensuous is the right word because they're just yummy but it's a question of getting used to them although they are supposed to be the easiest medium to use um, and they're so much more um, workable I think than acrylics because acrylics dry so quickly so there we go putting on this nice beautiful ultramarine glaze over my blue bottle or rather yeah a vase I'm just going oh that's one of the highlights you can see it is quite dark in its natural state and so I can work into that and work up where uh, the lights and the darts are, just by adding white, I think. Let's give it a go. And have some nice colour up there. It's a lovely colour, this one. Ooh, look at that. Yum, 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 yum. And I'll put the white highlights back, but at least I know where they are. So you can imagine the EOL Masters glazing away with their lovely colours. <coughs> I think painting changed in the 1850s when they started making synthetic pigments and paints became cheaper. And they invented the tube as well, so all the impressionists could leap out of doors and start painting on plein air. There we go. Also, another reason I like Liguin um, is it doesn't smell so much. You've got, uh, with a lot of uh, painting mediums and other things, um, they often in um, turpentine or something similar that's got a bit of a pong to it and you can tell their fumes and uh, liquid actually it's very good it doesn't smell so much it does smell a bit of something diesel or something um, and also the turpentine uh, substitute I recommend is Bob Ross everybody remembers Bob Ross um, this is very good. It doesn't smell at all. It's called a mineral solvent and it um, There are no fumes although it is marginally poisonous as it says they're unflammable So, you know, you have to treat it with respect, but it's not smelly and there are no fumes and it's half the price of um, the other one I used to recommend is Gamsol Okay, so I've got my glaze all over my blue thing and I'm just going to add a few little details uh, by adding some white to uh, some of the lighter areas. So for instance, over here, whoa, maybe that's a bit too much. Um, over here, I can add the white in there. It's just the reflection of the room and here is light as well. And you can see the paint remains active. Uh, you can get this a little tiny bit with acrylics, but really you have to work so quickly but I much prefer this and as you can see the the paint is mixing with the active paint on the canvas and we've got something going on there that kind of disappears over there um, got this area here I'm just going to use some kitchen towel uh, just to clean, wipe the excess paint off my brush or almost clean my brush and I'm just going to go here. Mm, yum, yum, yum. It's just a lovely exercise to do this, although I don't know about the market for still lives, but I do love doing this because the paint's so lovely. And we've got a little line of light there. And you can see I'm moving it around, so it's quite similar to that charcoal exercise. So you move the paint you want around <coughs> where you want it, really. 
and there's something a little bit happening in here make that a little bluer and that is really quite blue down here and you can see so you can almost smooth out your brush strokes as well which is rather nice so over here this kind of comes in there and we've got a defined hot pair which has been reflected in the, the bottom of the bottle this is very dark down here but there is a little bit of light along there and some more stuff happening over here so I'm still I haven't really picked up any more paint so I'm just using what's on the brush and I'm mixing it with what's on the painting surface as well so I'm just going to add a bit of detail here and then ooh, um, ooh, ooh, got to define my pair bring that down a bit oh we've got the handle of that and that is really quite light so I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of this blue and it's a little bit blue here ah. so there we go and then I'm and what I'm doing now is blending so actually fluffing the brush strokes away <clears throat> and there's something going on here let's put something in there um, getting a reflection of something So you can see how easy this uh, process of glazing is um, and it's a lovely way of painting shiny objects. So what I'm going to do now is actually pick up a clean brush, I hope, and put on some gleams. Um, I think I want a square one, not a square brush. So I'm just going to pick up some of that and got the windows over here actually a bit lighter than that in fact I just want to smooth that out so it's that seems like a window we've got this light around the handle of the kettle which is being reflected and it goes down there and up there so once you've established your darks with the grise painting the rest of it is quite easy and then you get this lovely depth of color when you add a oil glaze to it and there's a little bit going on here there we go hmm and there's a little reflection up here Ooh, yum what a lovely color and then I just want to some pure white for my little gleams. So I'm just going to use a, a little round brush, well a big round brush actually, pick up the pure white on the end and try and bonk in me greens, uh, gleams. So there's one there and there's one here. Whoa! And there's something going on here, I'm not entirely sure what. And <clears throat> what happens with oils, it will pick up the paint that's on the canvas. So you just have to clean your brush again and then I'm going to add a gleam there and this is the reflection of the light I've got and, ooh, and that's that and then that is that that's the light that's lighting up <coughs> the whole scene I think I need a bit more contrast actually but uh, give me a sec and I'll get round to it so there and there and there and another little gleam here so I just need I think a little bit lighter areas in here so again just picking up uh, a light blue uh, color mix I made and I'm just going in there and you can see it's blending in with the paint that's there this is why everybody should do oil painting it's much nicer than acrylics there we go whoops it's a question of getting used to how it works though so do something simple like painting an onion that's always good and you can do that in grise if you try hard enough so I'm getting quite a nice effect there and I'm just trying to get my uh, lights and darks right there we go 
and I'm just going to use what I call a fluffing brush. If I could find one. Now oh, here we are. My fluffing brush. This is an old one of these brushes, and what I do is I tend to use it for fluffing. So I just want to get rid of those brush strokes. So I'm just going to fluff around. And as I was saying, when you're painting uh, shiny objects like glass and uh, uh, reflective objects, you just have to paint what you see. So, I think we'll do the kettle next. So I'm just going to clean my brush with a baby wipe. So I'm just cleaning my brush with a baby wipe. It's just to keep, make sure you don't have open solvent in the studio all the time. Whether or not this is going to work, I don't know. I'm turning everything blue. I think it might survive. The main thing is with oil paints, it's very different from watercolours. You have to establish the darks first. So that is what I'm going to do. So for a copper kettle, the really easy thing to do is burnt uh, sienna. So here we are. So I've got some liquid here. Oops, gone a bit blue, but never mind. I've got some burnt sienna there. I'm persuade. This brush should be slightly less blue, and I suppose if I had some solvent to hand, I would probably use it. But as I say, you can work quite happily in oils without using lots and lots of solvent. We did do um, oil painting at the Sussex County Arts Club, I remember. I think we must have been all broke, but everybody was using white spirit, and we all just floated away with the fairies, high as kites by the end. So here we are, I'm just painting the copper of the copper kettle. And you can see I'm putting on a thin glaze of burnt sienna over the whole thing. And I will go back and refine my lights. But when the tones are there and right, uh, you can just happily sit on top. And um, become the colour of the copper kettle. So there we are, nice and coppery. Uh, burnt sienna is, I think, basically rust. So it's always this nice rusty colour. Um, there we go, just adding a bit here. Oops, leave that. Do this. And again, just mixing up a little bit more glaze and applying it down here. There we go. I just want to go, oops, on the edge of this. I'm going to have to work into this, but you can see once the tones are right, it works quite well. There we go, up there. And also the nice thing about oils, if something's gone terribly wrong, you can wipe it away. You can actually do something called tonking. You can actually sort of just put a piece of paper on it and take off some excess paint. That works really well. I'm very fond of that. So there we are. We've got our sort of glazed copper on there, but we need to work into that. And one way of working into it with an opaque colour is actually using um, yellow ochre, which works quite well because it just blends in with... Oh, I might as well go over the whole thing. Uh, uh, with the uh, the glaze of the burnt sienna underneath. So actually that's got this kind of arc of lightness there. And there's a little bit over here and here too. Um, and that comes down here. And that's over there. With which I probably will actually add some white. But, oh look, I can see myself. But I'm not going to paint myself in. And then I can go refine the gleams as well. So we've got nice kind of light coppery colour. And we've got a little bit of yellow ochre here, just to make that a little bit more opaque. And down here too. So this is an opaque colour into a transparent colour. There we go. So that's looking quite coppery, but now I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of white. Yeah, how much white do I want? Let's have a look. So there we go. So the white is blending in with the colours that are already there. And where else are they? Down here. So 
I am actually referring to my subject. This can be almost like colouring in, but not quite. So a little bit more white. And I want to keep this quite thick because I want it to be opaque. Uh, I want that as well. Hmm. Oh, that's the window, so I definitely want that to be light. That's the window. And then this is getting the reflected light from the wall behind. And, whoops, and there's something going on there. And I think I might pick up a little bit more burnt sienna. Again, I will have some kitchen towel, just wiping the excess paint off with my kitchen towel. And I wanted a little bit more burnt sienna up here. And maybe the pure paint. And you can see it's mixing in. This is why you have to establish your darks first. Because once you get white on your canvas, it's very hard to uh, refine the darks again. So dark to light with oils and light to dark in watercolour. Yeah, maybe that's a bit too light. Uh. There we go. And that can come down here. So you can do lots of lovely things with glazes. I highly recommend just having a <clears throat> mess around. Ask for some oil paints for Christmas and you'll be all set. And this is, oh, it's quite dark here, but there are a few little gleams going on. And there we go. So a nice shiny copper kettle. Um, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do now is work in some of the colours and work in some of the white. So I'm just going to pick up that white. And it's quite thick and gooey. When your paint is thick and gooey like this, this is when you use a painting medium. So I'm going to use this use the Liguin just to make the white flow a little bit better not for a glaze but just to make it flow better and so we've got this light here and we've got this big light there let's see what I can do with that so this is I don't want to be quite so hairy but there's definitely a light aura around this light as it were down there and then I want some really light light there yeah and a little bit of stuff happening down here and what's going on there mm -hmm. and I'm going to use <clears throat> some more actual burnt sienna so I'm going to pick it up straight uh, as a straight color and I just want a little bit more stuff happening in there And what I might do is have a bit of a fluff. Where's my fluffing brush? I just want to get rid of some of those brush strokes. There we go, a nice shiny kettle. But it's reflecting this blue <coughs> uh, jar. So I'm just going to pick up some blue and plonk it in. give it that not just to be a dark shape in copper it is actually blue so there is a bit of the color being reflected into oops my uh, copper kettle here we go and I can pretty much probably leave it more or less like that and that goes around the corner Oh no, that needs to be a bit bluer. And then we've got also got the red of uh, the pear. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of, uh, this is cadmium red. It's very thick and dense. So we'll have some pushing power. Whoa, there's a bit on the dark side, but it does certainly be red. And then I'm going to take some Lizzie Crimson to be the darker red. I 
can see there, and in fact that is really dark right over there. Uh, so I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of blue and put that here, just so darken up that edge. And then I'm going to try and smudge it around a bit and use my fluffing brush, which is here again. <coughs> so I'm just going to have a little bit of fluff. And then I want a few more gleams, I think. So again, I'm going to use uh, my round brush. And I think I would need a baby wipe to just clean up the excess paint. And if you can find baby oil wipes, they're the best. So I'm just going to pick up some pure white and put a few gleams in. Whoa. So there was a gleam here. Whoa and a gleam here and a gleam here and there was one just there as well <clears throat> I'm trying to think where else they are on the kettle hum mm -hmm. I've got some light there whoops so let's pick up some pure white and just pop it on the white and again I want a bit more going on there and that's got a nice light edge there uh, over here wah. and over here hmm I think I might stop there um, if I was doing it for myself, I would probably go on a little bit. In fact, that's what I'm going to do, go on a little bit. So I'm just going to get that line right. What's it doing? It's sort of like that. Um, uh, so now I'm going to do uh, this nice red pear. And again, I'm just going to create a glaze of Elysium Crimson, which is this here colour here. Oh, damn, I've got some white on that brush, so I'm going to switch brushes. Uh, it's getting quite small. Uh, as soon as you have white and Liz in crimson, it just ends up going rather hideous uh, pink. But this is fine. This is a glaze, so this will actually go really quite dark on top of my... Yeah, I might use a bit of that too. No, no, I need more glaze uh, on top of my pear. It is a little bit pink. No, no, I picked up some white. So I'm just pretty much going over the whole thing with Elysian Crimson. Yeah, and then I'm going to work into it to refine the lights and the darks. Just going to check my paint actually because <clears throat> that is a Lucas. All paints, paint makes a slightly difference. This is Winsor and Newton, um, <clears throat> and I'm finding Lucas a little bit more opaque than I'd like. I find the brush that I was using, which just seems to have disappeared, um, <clears throat> and show you the difference so this is uh, the Lucas Elysian Crimson and this is the Winsor oh that's much better whoa that's much better uh, the Winsor and Newton one which is much better there's the most wonderful painting of Dr Someone or Other by John Singer Sargent and if you've ever seen that in real life you can see how he's used red he is this man more or less life-size in a red coat um, and you can see how uh, he's played with the the reds he was using. In fact, I am going to wipe most of that stuff I put on off because I much prefer the Winsor and Newton. So you can wipe it off with a baby wipe or turps on a rag. That's why oil paints are supposed to be the easiest, so you can scrape them away. Anyway, back to the man in the coat, Dr. Palozzi or something his name was, and he. Uh, he painted the background in Elysian Crimson, um, which is just gorgeous, and then the man in the red coat in Cambium Red. 
and you can see how reds react and in fact they read a biography of that man who was a very well-known Italian doctor um, and he led such an exciting life they actually read his biography on the radio recently so as you can see so I'm just pretty much colouring in my pair with Winsor & Newton artist quality Elysian Crimson um, mostly Lucas the same but you get used to a particular paint makes and the colours that they they are and you just want those colours really but yeah that is much better so I can take a good old bit of Elysian Crimson and just pop it on here now with reds um, I'm going to use cadmium red to uh, build up some of the volume of this pair um, but you don't want to, if you want to sort of um, uh, make something lighter and red, try not to use white because that will give you pink, which is not what you want. You use yellows, but I'm going to start out with a bit of Elysian, um, a bit of the cadmium red, which is really opaque. Can you see? And it just blends in really nicely hmm. to the glaze of Elysian Crimson I've done. And Elysian Crimson is a, an odd little colour. It's, I think it's got a lot of oil in it and it, um, it can take six months to dry, which is quite a long time. Um, and in fact, that's why they have Varnishing Day at the Royal Academy. Um, if anybody saw the film Turner, you'll know that um, Turner rushes in and keeps painting where what he should be doing is his varnishing. So can you see, so I'm using an opaque paint opaque paint on a transparent glaze and I can build up the shape of this pair I hope yeah. see what it's doing there's something going on over here and you can see it's kind of working in to the glaze I've already put on there uh, <coughs> hum so something's happening here else is it doing it's over here and then uh, to lighten it again what I'm going to do is use this yellow uh, this is just cadmium yellow hue and I'm going to mix it in it's kind of orangey over here so that should mix in and turn sort of orange without going pink so I can make it a bit lighter and you're kind of building up uh, uh, tones um, gradually so I can build up this over here and then there's something happening over here that's the lighter bit isn't it and then a little bit of yellow over here and a tiny bit in there so I'm just wiping my brush in between because as you put it on the paper on the canvas it picks up the paint from the canvas and you have to wipe your brush that might be a bit too much but you can see it's lightening that red without turning it pink Yeah. Oh, there's something over here. Whoa. And what I'm going to do now is a bit of fluffing. I just want to blend everything a little bit together. Don't go crazy with fluffing, but it does help. So as you can see, I can soften all those edges. There we go. Look at the thing. That's always a good idea. So I'm just softening those edges. And I think I need that to go up a bit. So we're getting a nice shiny pair. <clears throat> and now I want to add in, oh, I want to soften that a bit. I just want to add in. There we go, having a bit of a fluff. Fluff, fluff, fluff. There we go, so we're kind of smoothing all the bits away. I'm just going to bring that backwards and forwards. And now I just want to add me gleams. So, am I going to commit to doing whites? I will go pink on me. So, just cleaning my brush with baby wipes. Just to get the last residue of oil off. And then I'm just going to pick up a little tiny bit of white uh, here. So we've got a nice gleam there. 
do I want to add more yellow? I think I want to add more yellow to that bit. I'm just going to pick up some of this pure yellow and I just want to lighten it up a bit as you can see it's all blending in nicely and yeah we're going to definitely need some yellow I think before I add the white and you can see so it, the paint blends on the canvas and then a little bit more yellow I think a bit of yellow over here I think I think I think and can you see so I'm putting on picking up pure yellow putting it on and it's lightening that red without turning it pink and you can see it's all blending into the uh, the glaze and the paints I've already got on there so I'm actually going to do that a little bit of red and a little bit of red and I'm going to have another fluff so I'm just going to fluff that away and fluff that a bit and fluff this a bit I think I think I think bring that down a bit and then I'm just going to add some white pure white on a round brush to be the highlight like here yeah Oh, gleaming and then I've got the reflection of my light so again I just need to clean my brush pick up that pure white and put in this light well that's a little bit impasto but at least the white's sitting on it there we are gleaming pair and yeah and there's a little lighter bit over here and so I'm just going in it's almost got a blue tinge to it actually because it's the natural light from the window which has gone pink and lilac and all sorts of other horrid colors so I'm just going to go in and put some yellow in there but there is another light there and a little bit more yellow just here and there a bit oh no there's a highlight over there so let me just there's a lighter area just here and actually this is the wrong brush for the job so I want a flatter brush uh, just here and I can blend that in just to lighten that area up a bit that. and then we've got a little gleam over here there's a little tiny gleam is there yes there's a little gleam there and then one here ah <laughs> or not maybe one up there in fact I just want to push that sideways a bit <sighs> there's another line that comes down here cadmium red I think Okay, so we have a shiny pair, and uh, in the fullness of time, I would consider the background. I always love uh, light shining through glass, um, but time's marching on, and with the uh, the silver bits of the kettle, again, I can put another glaze on. I've got a lovely colour here, which I really love. This is called chromatic black. Uh, it's made by Gamblin, which is the posh American make that Mr. Lawrence carries. And I'm just going to add a sort of glaze of that to look like silver, I hope. Uh, because you can really see the difference in the quality of the paint. Uh, so acrylic always dies rather flat and plasticky. Whereas oils are lovely. So I'm just popping in there. Yeah, again, you can see it's almost highlighted already. And so I just want to take that round there. Uh, this chromatic black is quite transparent and a bit bluey, but it's a really nice colour. Uh, and there's something happening up here too. 
So I'm just going to perhaps mix in a little bit of white to that. Uh, big tip, don't use silver paint to paint silver. All you can do is paint what the silver is reflecting. Hmm. Uh, which I don't like that bit there at all. Uh, but there's a nice lighter bit just here. There we are, nice and shiny. Uh, <clears throat> and then I will do the lid. Uh, again, I'm just using chromatic black. I would probably, um, if I was doing this properly, uh, I would probably be a bit more nuanced. But just to crack on, I'm going to use this lovely chromatic black. Eek. And you just have to paint what you see. I'm putting a glaze actually on the whole thing and then I hope I can revive it by adding light to it. I might just put a, ah, putting a little bit of tiny, a uh, tiny bit of yellow ochre in there uh, to get a slightly different glaze. But there's something happening here. And then I'm going to use a small brush to really look at that knob. Hmm. <clears throat> so back to my, I think my pointy one. Because I just want to look at what the gleams are up to. So we have a gleam here and something going on here. And then something going on here. And that is flat. And that goes like that. Uh, and then we've got the edge as well has got reflected light on it it's reflecting all the walls around it I think and a little bit of black and let's see what happens so there we go and that's reflected underneath this goes like that this goes like that and then I can do a similar process to the spout of the kettle. Hum. Um, again, I want this nice dark glaze. And then I'm going to work in, oops, the light bits. That's not quite so dark, so I'm going to use that slightly lighter one. And there's all sorts of gubbins going on there. And then... So I've got my darks established, a little bit more of a glaze up here. I can then work into it with my white. <clears throat> okay, so just grab a little bit of white. And I'm just, at this point, because it's rather gooey, I'm going to thin it down with Liguin, not create a glaze, but just thin it down. Um, so here we've got this very light bit just there. We've got this bit that kind of blends in. And that bit that goes like that. And that bit that goes like that. Hmm. I think I need to just knock that back a little bit. And then we've got some highlight down here as well. A little bit lighter. And this again to there. And then in here I need to add some lighter areas. I'm just going to use a bit of liquid to get that. Ooh, it's gone pink on me. Uh, <coughs> to get that lightness of the room being reflected into the silver of the copper kettle. And over here, so that really is quite light. And then it does have that little slightly yellowish tinge here. Okay, look. So, uh, and I think I want something dark just here. And you just have to paint what you see. So I've got a nice shiny top and bottom. And then I think I'm going to just soften that edge a little bit tidy it up and I think I might call that a day. There's something going on here. I think I've managed to smoosh away 
some of the glaze I put on, but I probably do want to put this here. And again, I'm just using the Liguin just to make the paint flow better. Just have that dog. And then, uh, in fact, I think I, uh, it's going to go green on me. I think I need just to come on there and tidy it up. And then I just need a bit of burnt sienna to tidy this bit up. Uh, a bit of that. See what it's doing. And there we go. I'm going to leave the background, I think, uh, for another day because the paint is all wet. And I have actually established the shadows and acrylics, so I can put the stalk on. Let's, go on. Let's put the stalk on, which is here. There's my little stalk, which I might give a little bit of three dimension to it. Ah, that's a bit of light. And this is all wet, so it's going to be a bit of a pain in the neck. There we are. Little stalk. No, I think I need burnt sienna. Let's do a bit of that. Ah. Oh, I'm fiddling. Okay, so I think I'm going to call that a day. I could tidy up some of these areas, but I think uh, by doing the background, that's went a bit wobbly. Um. Ah! Which I suppose I could do. I want that. No, that's completely wrong. Uh, I think I might leave. Or I could show you maybe. Just by using pure liquid, I can lift things away. Ah, oh, there we go. It's like a raising. And then that bit's annoying me a bit. So I'm just using liquid. Um, almost like terps I suppose. It's not terps, I don't think it is, but uh, you can erase things with that. So I'm just going to use some kitchen towel and see if I can get rid of that mistake. Ish. And down, it's not the same shape at all. But in the course of time I can correct that by painting the background. I'm going to stop now because I think anything else I do is just going to make sorry, it's just going to make it worse. So, have a go at glazing. It's lovely to do. It's such fun, and actually giving yourself a challenge of painting a shiny object or glass um, works really well with this technique. So, see you next week for building of dragons. <laughs>